Rocky Marciano, Joe Frazier, and Mike Tyson were three of the most popular heavyweight champions in history. And the one thing they all had in common, apart from the stylistic similarities, was the fact that they were all very short for heavyweight champions. Tyson and Marciano were around 5'10", Joe Frazier around 5'11", 5'11 half. Tyson was actually listed at 5'11 and a half during most of his career, but they exaggerated his height. He was really only 5'10", as was confirmed after he retired when he was measured again properly. But nonetheless, all short guys, all under six feet tall, all very popular, all pressure fighters who would chop down much bigger guys. And the reason I think they were so popular isn't just because they were exciting. They like to throw a lot of power punches and whatever. But there's also kind of a, David and Goliath situation going on there, a David and Goliath dynamic, whereby when you see a short guy like Tyson taking on all these big guys and defeating them, he represents the David character almost taking on the impossible, overcoming the odds every time he steps in the ring. And I think that was an inspiration to a lot of people just in you know all walks of life where they feel like it doesn't matter how big somebody is, it doesn't matter how big a problem is, if I've got enough belief and ferocity, I can overcome anything and anyone. I think that's one of the reasons on a subconscious psychological uh, level, that's one of the reasons why those short heavyweight champions were so popular. Now, since Mike Tyson's fall from grace in the 1990s, we haven't had another fighter in the mold of a Tyson or a Joe Frazier or a Marciano become heavyweight champion. We've had a few pressure fighters, the likes of Andy Ruiz recently, Alexander Povetkin, but neither one of those guys was able to light up the heavyweight division the way that Tyson, Frazier, Marciano did. You know, neither one of those guys is as dynamic as the aforementioned fighters. I mean, even David Tua, who never became heavyweight champion, was a lot closer to a Mike Tyson or Joe Frazier or a Marciano than Povetkin or Ruiz ever were. And I'm not saying that Ruiz and Povetkin couldn't have been, you know, very competitive in any era. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that they don't do for the public what Tyson, Marciano and Frazier did during their time. They don't even do for the public what David Tua did. And so boxing fans have been asking for a long time, have been praying to the boxing gods for a new Mike Tyson, a new Joe Frazier, a new Marciano. Will there ever be one? And if there is going to be one, where is he going to come from? Now, there's a guy called James Wilson, who some people have pointed me towards. He's an American heavyweight who has an MMA background. From what I've seen of James Wilson so far, he is going nowhere fast. He looks, you know, an impressive physical specimen, athletically gifted. There's, there's a few videos of him hitting the pads, but when you actually see him in the ring fighting, this guy doesn't look like he's going to go anywhere. Okay, so the jury is still out for me on James Wilson in a very big way. I think recently he drew with a journeyman, James Wilson. So he might look good in highlight reel, videos that he shoots for Instagram, hitting the pads, but in the ring against actual opposition, doesn't look great. So I don't really have high hopes for him. There was another guy who is a Dominican American called George Arias. And I thought he might have some potential because he had a lot of uh, energy in his early fights and stylistically reminds you of Joe Frazier, although you know, a bigger version of Frazier. But he seems to have completely disappeared. I don't know what happened to George Arias. Has he lost the fight? Has he drawn a fight? I don't know what's going on with his promotional situation. He used to be with top rank uh, Bob Arum. Not sure what is going on with him now. So he's another one who I was just interested in following his career, but I didn't know how far he would go. Aside from that, we don't really have any fighters in a similar mode to a Tyson or, you know, Frazier or Marciano on the horizon, as far as I can tell. Now, one place where we might need to look if we want to find the next uh, 
small heavyweight champion is Eastern Europe because there's a hell of a lot of talent coming out of Eastern Europe, as we know. Now, this individual right here, Evgeny Romanov, he's up there in age at 34, as, as is often the case with these Eastern Europeans. They have such long amateur careers that a lot of them don't turn pro until they're into their late 20s or early mid 30s, which is the case with Evgeny Romanov. Now, who is he? And why am I talking about this guy in particular? Well, this is the guy. Let me just take you to his. Uh, this is the guy who knocked out Deontay Wilder in the amateurs. Knocked him out in three rounds. You guys can see a video of that on YouTube. It's easy to find. Knocked him out in three. And obviously had, you know, good success in the amateurs. As a pro so far, 14 and 0, 10 KOs. Hasn't been fighting anybody particularly good. And he's been based out in Russia. He might need to leave Russia. I don't know what his, his uh, promotional situation is like, but he might need to leave Russia and head over to Britain, the United States, etc. if he wants to get a move on because that's where all the action is in the heavyweight division right now is in Britain and America. It's not in Russia, yeah, at least not in terms of opportunities. So have a look on YouTube at Evgeny Romanov. Tell me what you think. Is it too late for him at 34 years of age? And as I say, I'm talking about small heavyweights here. He's only six feet tall. And you look at his weight, similar to Mike Tyson in weight, right? Turn pro at 217. His last fight, 226. So his weight is creeping up a bit and that's a little bit of a concern. You'd want to see him around the 220 mark. But uh, yeah, have a look at him online. And let me know what you think. Can he be the next fighter in the mold of a Tyson, Frazier, Marciano at the very highest level? Or have heavyweights got so big now that somebody six foot or under could never become heavyweight champion? Is that where we're at? Will there never be a guy under six foot become heavyweight champion again? Maybe this guy could do it. Maybe he can't. The time will tell. Another individual you might want to look at is this guy, Mihai Nista, who is a Romanian heavyweight. Again, 5'11", very short guy, 29 years old. And the reason that his name is known is because he knocked out Anthony Joshua in the amateurs. So you've got a guy who knocked out Wilder, six feet tall, and a guy who knocked out Joshua, who's 5'11". So far, he's only 2-0 as a pro at 29 years of age, you know, a bit younger than uh, Romanov, but he needs to get a move on. At 29 years of age, he's only had two fights so far. Both of them in the United States. So in terms of, uh, you know, matching him, hopefully he'll be able to be moved at a faster rate than Romanov is being moved at the moment and get in better opposition. In fact, let me check what shows he's been fighting on. Okay, he's been fighting on Golden Boy shows. Now that is a good sign because if he's with Golden Boy, what was his debut actually? Golden Boy as well. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that this is a guy who, if he's not signed to Golden Boy, he is uh, associated with them. So if he's on, you know, if he's with Golden Boy, that means he might be able to get access to Matchroom heavyweights because they're all on his own. Golden Boy and Matchroom. So keep an eye out for him. Have a look at him on YouTube and let me know what you think. Can he go on to become? The, uh, the the modern version of a uh, Rocky Marciano, Tyson, Joe Frazier, etc. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. It's happening. I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q and A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just three dollars a month, the equivalent of about two pounds a month. You get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up 
there's no contract and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.